Hi everyone, today we'll be looking at an integrated demo outlining our geophysics and geology package. In this case study, we'll be looking at a dataset in the Williston Basin and looking at the historical production of some wells. So on the base map here, I have a raster image as well as some well spots and around the well spots I have well criteria outlining historical production. We can see here that we have a trend of producing wells here, but we also have a couple wells that were dry wells. To get a more detailed view of the production, we can go into well properties and look at the actual decline curve. Here we can see that this well had a relatively shallow production decline curve, so we can use this as a reference when we examine our other wells. Next, let's take a more detailed look at this well by using the log editor. Here we can see our log curve data associated with the well as well as a generated synthetic. I have a zone here highlighted in green that highlights the Winnipegosis, which is a Devonian carbonate. I can also compare my other wells, the 4 of 23 and the 9 of 22, which are also on reef but were not producing. To get a better idea of the discrepancies between the drilled wells, a 3D survey was shot in the area. Let's go back to our base map now. And let's create a cross section going through the trend of the producing wells. You can easily create cross sections here with a few or even hundreds of wells. Another useful feature I have is I can actually dynamically change the well cache distance. So right now it's set to 100 map units from the cross-section line. If I bump that up to 1,000, you can see that the wells quickly populate. I also have the option to move the cross-section. So this is going to be a 100 meter increment up or down. If I go to my base map here, we can see our cross-section line. I'll turn off our well criteria to get a closer look. And if I go back to our section here, you can see I can use these arrows here to move the cross-section. Let's take a look now at a cross-section that I've already created. In this cross-section, we can get a comparison of our producing versus non-producing wells and see if there's any trends we can infer. I have a log curve track outlining my sonic, gamma, and density curves, as well as surfaces generated from tops. I can change all these parameters here quickly on the left-hand side here under the object properties, as well as change the scale from fixed to map scale. Looking back at our cross-section now, if you look at our 8 of 22 well, you can see the prairie evaporate surface stops, and we need to add a couple well top picks. We can quickly add this by selecting our prairie evaporate top, and simply left-clicking along the curve where we think the pick should be. Once we have that created, we can actually go ahead and output the surface as a grid. And let's take a quick look at the grid that we just created on the base map here. We can also quickly create grids using quick gridding contour. I can display a well ribbon. In this case, I have the Winnipegosis formation but I'm also able to grid well information, production data, or even zones. Once you have your well written posted, you use quick gridding contour and simply drag an area to grid. Now that we have some grids created, let's now look at our seismic data. Before this, I'm going to turn on some well criteria for wells that have sonic that will help us with synthetic work. I'm going to open up a cross line going through our 8 of 22 well.
And we can see here we have our wellboard projected as well as the formation tops due to the time depth relation we have from our sonic curve. And go ahead and turn on a log curve template if I wish. And here we can see our gamma, our sonic, and our density curves. We also can see highlighted in green our zone of interest. Let's go ahead and generate a synthetic here. And go ahead and I can select our Aetive 22 well. And here I can quickly generate from sonic and density a synthetic. I have the option to use theoretical wavelets as well as a wavelet file extracted from Seismic. I have one already picked, so I can go ahead and now I can just left click along the well bore. And now I have a synthetic that I can use to tie my Seismic and well data. To help with that, I can actually overlay a velocity curve alongside. And with this, I can just get a better idea if I do any bulk shifts or stretch and squeezing. So in this area here, I can use my torque weight as a regional marker, so I can go ahead and bulk shift my synthetic slightly, as well as I can use the stretch squeeze and set an anchor point and adjust my interval velocities until I'm happy with the tie. Once I have that set, I can save that as a new velocity curve or overwrite an existing one. Now that we have a visual tie, we can quantitatively determine the tie using mist tie analysis. Before I do that, I'm just going to clean up our viewer here by just turning off some of the curves. I'm going to use the mist tie analysis tool and I'm going to open up a window around our torque wave formation. So here we can see a zoomed in view where we can actually iterate and change the phase, static, and gain. If I use iterate, it'll actually go through automatically and it'll adjust the seismic in reference to the synthetic. I can process this or I can apply it to the main screen and have a new version of that seismic. Now that we're pretty happy with this tie, we can go ahead and pick the Winnipegosis horizon. We can see that it follows a relatively strong peak which we can set in our horizon pick parameters. We can move up and down the line and quickly auto pick on that event. Once we have a series of seed picks, we can go ahead and actually run the 3D auto picker that will create a gridded map. I've gone ahead and ran that already and now you can see I have the Winnipeg OSS horizon showing the structure of our reef. I've actually run a smoother on it, which is under our horizon smoothing and attributes. That just gives us a better idea. We can also run attributes or operations like dip and maximum curvature that will give us a better idea of the structure of the horizon. I've gone ahead and ran this already, so if we look at our maximum curvature, we can see that the light colors here represent high curvature or the crest of the reef, but it doesn't give us a good idea over the overall geometry. If I switch to dip, we can see here that we get a good idea of the overall geometry of the reef with some reefal breakdown in the southern portion. What we're going to do is open up an arbitrary line that's going to bisect our wells in question. view here. I'm just going to adjust my base map a bit so we can see both on screen. And what I'm going to do is bring back our Winnipegosis horizon. And here we can see that our cursor is actually tracking on the base map in conjunction with the viewer. And you can see here that areas of dip, we're actually seeing the traces dip alongside. So I move it up, and if we go to our 8 of 22 well, we can see that this has quite a bit of dip, representing the crest of our reef. We can go on through the entirety of the reef. So one observation that we've made, so I'm just going to switch back to our amplitude of the Winnipegosis. And looking at this now, so we can see our 16 to 15, which was our non-producing well, we can see that the amplitudes are relatively high. If we look at our 8 of 22, which is our good producing well, we see that we have relatively low amplitudes. 
Because we suspect a relationship between amplitude and production, we can go ahead and use spectral decomposition. This is a two-step process where you first create frequency slices using the fast Fourier transform method, and then from that, generating time slices. Coming back to the map here, we go through our first pass. So this is actually at one hertz. So I can actually slice down until I see a frequency that I see amplitudes that correspond to a feature of interest. So I can go back and I can see here at around 30 hertz, this is kind of highlighting that discrepancy between low amplitudes and production and high amplitudes and non-production. I've gone ahead and I've run it a second time and I've created time slices at 30 hertz. We can see here that the darker colors correspond to low amplitudes, which is our 8 of 22 producing well, and our high amplitudes shown by lighter colors represent low production. To get an even more detailed look, we can use wavelet analysis, where we can select multiple wavelets to compare against the seismic data. In this example, I've selected three wavelets, one that's off-reef, one that's on reef tight, which is a 16 of 15 non producing well, and then on reef porous, which represents our 8 of 22. Go ahead and run this. If we go back to our map here, we can see that we have a nice facies diagram outlining in green the on reef porous, in pink the on reef tight, and purple off reef. I can even go and use the culture editor and eventually draw a facies outline. Now that we're pretty confident that we have our data constrained in time, we'll eventually need to do a depth conversion. So right now I just brought up the Winnipeg Oasis horizon again, and we're going to go through velocity modeling. In velocity modeling, what we do is we can create either a single layer or multi-layer model that will calculate the time and depth equivalencies to calculate a velocity gradient and from that the depth grids. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And you can see here for each layer we can see time, velocity, and depth grids as well as the well data points. What's nice is we can look at each layer and QC them. We can look at either the cross plot, the histogram, or even go into the velocity grid and see the contributing well points. I can add or remove points here and even add fake inner well picks. Once you're happy with the model, you can generate a velocity seg y or model to use in the depth conversion. In this example, I've already generated a velocity seg y. If I go back to the viewer here, I can actually switch versions. And I can see the velocity version here. And you can see the color changing as my velocity changes through the layers. To save some time, I've already gone through the full depth conversion. So to look at it, we're now going to switch sessions to our depth one. In our depth session here, right now I have a map of the Winnipeg Oasis horizon that was converted to depth from our velocity modeling run. I have in white an outline over the overall geometry of the reef, and in blue I have an oil water contact. I was able to determine this by looking at the 11 of 14 well, which we know was a water well that lies on that contour. If we leave those culture layers up, and let's take a look at the spectral decomposition run that we ran previously. I'm going to change the color bar to get a better image. And we can see here that the contributing amplitudes matches pretty nicely with the oil water contact and the white outline. So at this point, we've just theorized the relationship between amplitude and porosity. Um, to get a more quantitative look, we'll use the cross plot. I'll go ahead and load a previously saved run I have here. And in this plot here, I have density porosity on the y-axis, and I have amplitudes from our spectral decomposition run at 30 hertz. 
colored here on the right in the legend, I have a color bar representing the structural highs and lows of the well. I have an equation showing the trend line as well as the R squared value showing an 85% correlation, which is pretty high. Just looking at this, we can see our 8 of 22 well, which we know is our producing well, has a relatively high porosity versus the amplitude. We can see our 9 of 22 well, while structurally higher, actually corresponds to a lower porosity. Because we can see that our wells follow this trend quite nicely, we can actually use the equation from our trend line here and calculate our horizon with the porosity. From our map here, we can see that the brighter colors correspond to higher porosity and darker colors low. I can actually go ahead and plan a well using the well planning tool and create a horizontal well that goes through our porosity through the crest of the reef here. To save it, I can go ahead and go to the well planning tool and save it as a new well. We can actually take this a step further and open our 3D geophysics tool, which allows us to view all our data three-dimensionally. So right now I have my seismic data as well as the Winnipeg Osa's depth grid. And you can see here I have that well that I just planned out that shows going through the crest of the reef quite nicely. In 3D geophysics, I also have the option to generate contours on the fly using the GPU, which creates it almost instantaneously. I can change my parameters here. any sort of image that I really want. And with that, that brings us to the end of our integrated demo here. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out. Thanks.